Welcome to this YSL Microsoft Excel tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to cover nested if functions. We'll begin with a quick recap of basic if functions to allow you to perform one logical test and create two possible answers. Then we'll look at nesting a single if function inside another to extend your list of answers to three. We'll look at examples which allow you to compare numbers, text and dates. And then at the end of the video, show you how you can layer multiple levels of nested ifs to extend the list of possible answers as far as you like. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a list of the top 50 highest grossing movies of all time. As usual, if you want to follow along with the video, I'll drop a link in the description below so that you can download this same sample data and follow along with me if you'd like to. So this video is all about writing nested if functions, which basically is when you insert one if function inside another. Just before we do that, I'd like a quick recap of basic if functions. And to demonstrate that, we're going to create a new column that describes our film's Oscar success. And the basic way I'm going to make this work is I'm going to check if the value in column I is equal to zero. It means the film is a loser. Otherwise, the film is a winner. So we know all about basic logical tests from our previous video. You've got two values to compare and then some sort of conditional operator to put in between them. So in this case, it's going to be the equal to operator. And then we know about basic if functions as well. So we're going to insert a logical test into the if function and we're going to check if the value in cell i2 equals zero. Then the answer if true is going to be the, the word loser. The answer if false is going to be the word winner. So let's just put that into practice. Let's head back into our original worksheet zoom in a little bit and then head across to the right hand side. And in column L, I'm going to say equals if I2 equals zero, follow that with a comma. And if so, that film is a loser. Comma. Otherwise, that film is a winner. And of course, because those are two bits of text, they need to be enclosed in double quotes. Once I've done that, I can hit enter and then fill that formula down that column by double clicking the autofill handle. And we can see for each film whether it's a winner or a loser. So that basic if function is working pretty well. We're getting an appropriate description for each film. But I feel that we've perhaps been a little bit unfair to some films in describing them losers. Some films didn't get nominated for any Oscars at all. So is it fair to call them a loser if they couldn't have won in the first place? Maybe we should have a third category for films that didn't receive any nominations. We can call them not nominated. And the problem with a single if function is that it only gives you two possible answers, true or false, yes or no, do or do not. If you want more than two possible answers, then you're going to need more than one if function. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap another if function around our existing one. And we're going to use that extra if function to first of all establish whether the film received any Oscar nominations. We're going to check if the value in cell H2 is equal to zero. If that's true, then I want to produce the result not nominated. And then if that's false in the, the, uh, the answer if false part of this if function, we're going to insert an entire separate if function. So the if function we've already written. So this is the basic nature of nested ifs. The answer if true and answer if false part can both be occupied with an entirely separate if function. And this is the nested if. Now you can actually do this up to 64 levels if you really wanted to. Um, that's way more than you're ever going to need and certainly way more than you'll ever want to do. But let's have a quick look at this basic example first. Let's head back into the original worksheet. I think we should probably create a separate column for this. So let's call this one uh, inventively Oscar success to uh, let's call it Oscar success fair. Fairer, I suppose. So we'll begin in cell M2 by saying equals if. And we're going to say H2 equals zero, followed by a comma. And if that's true, we know the film wasn't nominated for anything, so we can say not nominated. Then we can enter another comma, which takes us onto the value if false parameter of our first if function. And at this point, we're going to begin a new if function by typing in its name and opening up some more round brackets. Now you'll spot that the tooltip reverts to the logical test parameter of your new if function. 
So now we can check if I2 equals zero. And if that's true, then we know the film must have been nominated for at least one Oscar. So we can successfully describe it as a loser. And then another comma and the final value if false means that if we reach this stage, the film must be a winner. We need to make sure we close the correct number of round brackets. So we have two if functions open. We need to make sure we close two sets of round brackets at the end. So having done that, if we hit enter, we can then fill that formula downwards. And now we get three different categories, one for not nominated, one for losers and one for winners. Just as with basic if functions, you can compare numbers or text or dates with your nested ifs. So we've done an example to do with numeric values there. Let's have a quick look at comparing text. I want to provide a description for my films based on the genre. If it's science fiction, I'm going to call that the best. If it's romance, I'm going to call that the worst. And then for everything else is just going to be, well, everything else. So let's create a new column in column N. I'm going to call this one genre rating. And then in cell N2, I'm going to first of all check if the value in cell K2 equals science fiction. It's not case sensitive when you perform basic comparisons like this, but I'm going to match the case anyway. If that's true, I want to produce the result best. Otherwise, I want to perform another logical test. So I'm going to open up another if function and check if K2 equals romance. And if that one's true, then I'm going to call that one worst because it genuinely is the worst genre. And then otherwise, everything else just gets lumped together into one final catch all result. So I'm going to call that one anything else. I've got two sets of round brackets open, so I need to make sure I close two sets again hit enter, and then we can see whether a film belongs to the best, the worst, or the anything else genre category. For an example to do with date values, let's compare the release date of our films to establish uh, what sort of age the film is. I think if it's before the year 2000, then it's ancient. If it's between 2000 and 2010, it's old. And then anything more modern than that, we'll just call modern. So in order to do that, we're going to test the values in column C. Let's create a new column in column O. We'll call this one age. And then in cell O2, we'll say equals if C2 is less than. So I want to check if it's released before the year 2000. We've got a couple of different ways of doing this. I think we saw a couple of examples in the previous video. For this example, I'm going to use the date function so that I can construct a specific date by putting in the year and the month and the day. So I'm going to check if the result of that uh, the value in cell C2 is less than the 1st of Jan 2000. If that's true, then the film is ancient. Otherwise, I want to check if it was released before the year 2010. So I'm going to insert another if function and I'm going to check if C2 is less than date 2010 and then the 1st of Jan of that year as well. And then if that's true, I want to produce the word old. Otherwise, the catch all final value is false. The film must be modern. Close two sets of round brackets because I've got two if functions open and then hit enter to create my new formula and fill it down the column. So we can see our three separate categories for ancient, old and modern. So we've created a few examples where we've nested one if function inside another to create three possible results. And I mentioned earlier on that you can do this up to 64 levels to effectively get 65 different possible answers. And that's way more than you're ever going to need or want to do using an if function. There are much better solutions if you have that many possibilities. But just to finish the video, I'd like to create an example that has three if functions nested together to create four different possibilities, just to show the process, how you go about building these layers. So the example we're going to create is going to be based on the film's runtime column. I want to describe my films as either short, medium, long or epic based on the runtime. So if it's less than 100, it's short. Between 100 and 150 is medium. 150 to 200 is long and then anything longer than that is epic. 
when you have multiple levels like this to create, it can be helpful to sort of visualize what you're about to do by drawing some sort of diagram that shows the sequence of the logic. So if I head to my flow diagram page where I've produced this beautiful diagram to help explain what's going on, the blue uh, diamonds represent the questions we're going to ask, the logical tests. The, uh, the green rectangles represent the true parts and the red rectangle represents the false part. So we're going to begin with a question that asks if our film runtime is less than 100. And if that's true, we end up in the short box and the film is described as short. If the film was not less than 100, we move on to the next question and ask that. Is it less than 150? If that one's true, then yeah, it's medium. If it's not, then we move on to the next question and so on. This can kind of help explain why you see this sort of um, uh, almost almost looks like a problem, doesn't it? If a film, let's say we saw a film that was 95 minutes long. Well, 95 minutes is less than 100 and it's less than 150 and it's less than 200. So which box should it fall into? Well, when you're asking questions in a sequence like that, then it makes it really obvious which box you fall into. Is the film less than 100 minutes long? Yep, it is. It's short and that's it. That's the end of that chain. It can't go any further. So I, I really found these, these diagrams helpful when I was building complex nested ifs initially. Anyway, all that preamble aside, let's actually create it. Let's head back to the top 50 box office worksheet and let's head over to the next available column. Let's head over to column P and I'm going to call this one length. And then in cell P2, we're going to say equals if D2 is less than 100. There's our first logical test. If that's true, the film is short. Follow that with a comma. Then we need another if function to test the next condition. So we're going to say, is D2 less than 150? If that's true, then the film must be medium. If not, then we can move on to yet another if function. So here's our third and our logical test. This time will be D2 less than 200. Enter a comma and then the value can be uh, long. And then another comma. And again, at this point, we could insert another if function. But I think that's more than enough to demonstrate the principle. I'm going to finish this off with a final catch-all epic description. And then I need to make sure I've closed the appropriate number of round brackets. So one for the um, if function I'm working on, then two more for the other two open if functions. When I hit enter, I can then fill that formula downwards and see a sensible description for each film based on whether it's short, medium, long or epic. So there we go. There's the basics of working with nested if functions in Excel. In subsequent videos, we're going to show much more sensible approaches to solving this sort of a problem using various other functions like ifs, switch and lookup functions. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that one. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.